Hey folks, it's Nate. Thanks for joining me with another Iron Age comic review. <clears throat> I apologize if my voice is a little scratchy. I'm getting over a, a slight cold here. Um, and yes, we have two Iron Age comic reviews in a row because these things ebb and flow. Right now they are flowing. Today we are looking at, um, I guess you can call this Beauty 1 and 2 from Brendan Swan. I've already reviewed the first story in here when I reviewed his uh, his campaign for, um, I believe it was Disintegration Street Volume 2. Um, we got Strange Love as part of that package due so, as a, uh, a complimentary add-on because of a few delays he had. All in all, uh, a pretty neat consideration from Mr. Swan there. Um, this book collects... Uh, Strange Love and Spider Webs in a single volume, for reasons that I will discuss when we get into the critique of the story. Um, but for right now, the basic review is pretty simple. Um, starting with the form factor, this is uh, this volume comes bound on his usual um, miniature book version, so this will not stand out among your other um, volumes from him. And it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, it has a nice, smooth, but matte finished paper. Uh, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that's how I like my comics. I don't like a high gloss on the page. Um, I think it makes them less readable. Um, this is a very nice matte finish to it. Magazine quality paper, but without a, a shine that can, will create glare in good lighting. Um, and this is a black and white book. Uh, I should say that right off the bat. Other than the covers, which are in color, um, there is no color in this book, which is a departure from Swan's other books. If you're familiar with his Disintegration Street series, that is in color. Now, uh, Swan does all of his illustrations by hand, including the colors, but perhaps that's not surprising. It is a good way to save a little time. Uh, and I don't think the story suffers for it. In fact, um, as I've said before, I think some of his strongest uh, visual storytelling is in Strange Love which is quite good on the visual storytelling front. Um, if you just look at some of this line work in here um, and that very good use of light and shadow um, over here to create a, a sense of depth to an image. Very good stuff. Uh, I like it. Um, spider webs is more of a, a two-tone composition. You can kind of see that here um, and, and also here. Uh, I think in most cases, this is used very effectively. Um, some of the pages suffer from what I refer to as uh, mud syndrome. There's a little too much tone on a, a page or two that kind of makes them washed out. Let me see. Um, it's not frequent. Here's an example of a page, though. I think it has a little too much gray in it and not quite enough um, strong blacks or whites. Uh, it's not very common. There's just one or two pages uh, that are like that out of... I would say um, probably 80, 84 pages. Again, no page numbers. Um, that's my personal hobby horse. Put page numbers in your book, please. Um, it, it makes some things just easy. Uh, but there are no page numbers here, so I can't be entirely sure. Uh, the story is much, much the same as Strange Love in Spiderwebs. It's about a person who attempts to adapt themselves to the wants and needs of another person in order to gain their affection. Um, the difference here is that our protagonist is a, a man rather than a woman, uh, because the protagonist of Strange Love was a female android, um, or a gynoid if you prefer, uh, because android implies male. Um, we had a gynoid in the, uh, in the first story. In the second story, we have a man who just so happens to be the proprietor of a uh, motel. And this, this man has built a series of tunnels um, throughout his building that allows him to peek in on people, thus it's subtitled, The Voyeur of Utter Destruction. He is a voyeur, um, he spends a lot of time spying on people, and he becomes enamored with a new resident, um, and he then spies on her in an attempt to become something that will really entrance her. Uh, very interesting, um, very fascinating uh, kind of a story there. Um, so to give, give a review, um, if you've read Swan's stories already, you know that the dialogue here um, is, is very uh, dreamlike, almost. Um, his stories tend to um, 
have a pacing that is not so much uh, about narrative as it is about evoking a mood. Um, so the dialogue, not always straightforward, uh, but it, it does accomplish a lot of things. Uh, Spiderweb part of the, the title refers to a serial killer that is well set up uh, in dialogue. And um, that serial killer is a part of the plot, uh, a very important part of the plot. He's going around and murdering idols, um, which is kind of a slang term for a, a uh, performer, um, a musical performer usually tries to build up a, a very um, passionate fan base. This is a, a Japanese phenomenon for the most part. Um, the closest we have had to idols in America is probably uh, the boy band craze of the 90s had a, a lot of idol culture mixed up in it. Um, so if you think of the uh, way people reacted <clears throat> to NSYNC or, or bands like that, the Backstreet Boys, um, that's kind of idol culture writ small. So um, we have someone going around murdering these idols. And Caroline, the, the uh, girl that our protagonist becomes fascinated with, is an idol. So you can see how all of these things are going to dovetail together very quickly. Um, I think that Swan does a pretty good job setting all of these things up and then bringing them all together and putting a bow on top. That is, um, I began to see the similarities between this story and his other work about a third of the way through. I was still a little surprised by the final twist. I'm not going to talk about that right now because we are not into the spoiler talk yet. But uh, all in all, I would call Spiderwebs a, a very good um, story in Swan's universe. And it is all part of the same universe. Um, of course, uh, um, Strange Love and Disintegration Street all take place in the same continuity with Spiderwebs. Um, and I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case. But as things began to develop uh, you know, about that one third point, I was like, oh, okay. So we are playing with some of the same themes and probably in the same world. And by the end, it becomes entirely clear that we are. So if you have enjoyed uh, some of his other stuff, then you will probably enjoy um, Spiderwebs as well. If you haven't read any of Swan's stuff, I actually think that this collected volume is a better way to get into his work than Disintegration Street Volume 1. For starters, it has um, some of his more mature, better artwork in it. Disintegration Street Volume 1 um, is, shows a lot of growth over the course of the book, um, but it, it really doesn't give you an appreciation for what Swan can do as an artist. Um, you don't really see him hit his stride until probably the middle of Disintegration Street Volume 2. So if you want to see um, the kind of artwork and visual storytelling that you're going to get on full display, um, then this is the place to start, in my opinion. It also gives you some very good, useful pieces of information about his world without giving any spoilers for the Disintegration Street story. Also very good. Um, so if you are interested in the artwork you see here or the um, brief thumbnails of the stories, story that I've given you here, I would recommend picking this up rather than Swan's other work. Now, if you've already read Disintegration Street, and you're enjoying that, this is definitely worth checking out. Um, it doesn't have quite the same creepy vibe to it that Disintegration Street has. It's a little more of a regular mystery with um, less of that kind of sense of um, surreal horror to it that uh, Disintegration Street has. There's a little bit of that, um, more in Spiderwebs than in Strangelove, but that is not the primary thrust of these stories. Um, they are a, a little more comedic, not that Disintegration Street isn't comedic, but um, they are a little more comedic, a little more silly, a little more slapstick uh, than that story is. Um, and all in all, I think the, uh, the overall balance and tenor of um, Beauty 1 and 2 make it work better as an introductory point than Disintegration Street. Um, and if you have read that, this is a great companion piece to that. Um, now, if you aren't into um, these kind of psychological stories um, that are about the way the mind works first and foremost and about um, the way characters react to sudden circumstances and less about world building, 
and um, a, a strong, cohesive plot. Uh, it's not that there isn't a plot to these stories. There is a plot, but it's not the most cohesive thing about it. Um, this may not be your cup of tea. Uh, that's okay. Um, there are lots of, uh, of very good plot-driven stories out there. This is about character study first and foremost. And if you're okay with that, um, I can recommend Disintegration Street. If you're not okay with that, I wouldn't recommend um, either Disintegration Street or this. Um, so that is my review. Let's get into critique and some of the spoiler talk. Um, artistically, I kind of think this is a step back from, um, from what we got in Strange Love. While uh, the addition of the gray tones does give the images a little more depth and, and nuance to them, um, one of the things that Swan has added to, the, to his art style that is new here is uh, a use of some um, Chibiko kind of uh, moments where people kind of devolve into these um, slightly squished down, low-res versions of themselves. And there's a place for that, um, especially in humor, which there, as I said, there is more of in this than uh, in some of his other works. Um, but I think one of the things that makes the tone of something like Strange Love really work is this very strong um, sense of realism that runs through it, in spite of the strange and bizarre uh, circumstances that we see people living through. Um, and there is no moment in Spiderwebs that's comparable to like these sudden swings of emotion that we get in Strange Love. Um, now, Disintegration Street has a little bit of this kind of um, exaggerated expression in it as well. I think that works a little bit better for what Disintegration Street is doing because it is very surreal. Um, but Strange Love is great because this, the surreal nature comes with the, the strong, realistic illustrations um, paired with the very bizarre circumstances the character is living through. And I think, um, I think some of these uh, artistic changes take away from that. Like we have this uh, sequence where um, Landlord peeks in on some tenants who are just wrestlers, and they... They're kind of these Kinniku Man kind of figures. Um, Ultimate Muscle, for those of you who are more familiar with the American uh, branding. They just look out of place. Uh, this, is, this is not what I was expecting. Um, and it, it feels almost like you stumble through different stories through here. Um, I think it, it takes a little bit of the force away from the narrative. Um, I understand if Swan was looking for um, ways that would help him tell his story faster... Um, finding moments to have low-res illustrations can definitely do that. Um, I don't think he's hit quite the right balance in the story, though. Um, so that is as it may be. Story, Storytelling-wise, um, I think Swan manages to handle creating that odd psychological um, suspense vibe that he's, he's very good at running through even... Um, the, the more slapstick moments of this story. The really interesting thing here, and, and the aha moment for me, was the revelation that the landlord is Andy Stone, the robot builder who has been a major antagonist through all the other uh, stories in Swan's universe. We see here um, some of the events that shaped him and made him who he was, we see him build beauty number one, inspired by Caroline. Um, and we see his detachment from humanity that is on display in every appearance he has in the story. Um, but we understand better through this, uh, through spiderwebs, just because he is, he is younger um, and he hasn't quite come to peace with what he is yet I think um, and he does in large part become who he is later in in other tales because of what happens in spider webs that's very uh, very effective use of this kind of a prequel story especially since we don't know this is Andy until the end um, if we had known that earlier on we probably would have suspected that um, he was going to survive. As it is, 
I didn't. I kind of expected him uh, to to die along the way. But since he's Andy Stone, since he has to go on and continue building more of these robots, well, he can't quite. Um, I also like the fact that Beauty Number One is introduced in the second story, and Beauty Number Two in the first story. That's a that's a clever bit of a parallel construction that I hadn't. I it caught me almost entirely by surprise. Um, so good stuff here. Um, I think that on the whole, um, it is exciting to see Juan iterate and work on um, how he's going to illustrate and tell his stories quickly and effectively. I think he he. I think he was closer with Strange Love to something that I personally like um, than he was with Spider Webs, and I hope to see um, more of Strange Love in future installments. Um, but that, that's just to taste. And if he can't put out stories as quickly, that kind of illustration style, I understand why he would choose to kind of shelve it, at least for the time being. But those are my thoughts on spider webs and the campaign. And, uh, it's, it's good stuff. If you enjoy Swan's kind of storytelling, and I will admit that is probably a narrower segment of comic readers than something like the Ripperverse, which I reviewed previously. Um, but if this is your jam, I think you'll enjoy this. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. There's a like button and a subscribe button down there. You can use those as you see fit and I'll talk to you later.